Hey guys, this is Dee, and this is a little bit of a different video. It's kind of a, a story time. It's a few things I want to share with you guys, and a few things I want to talk about, and they're kind of sporadic and all over the place, but um, um, they're just things I want to share. So, um, first of all, it's about, first one's about me being single at my age, and it's hard to be single at my age because um, if you want to find a partner, like I, I would like to find a partner at this point, um, they're either already involved and they're with someone for on, over a long term or they're not with someone and a lot of times they're very hurt and either they're looking for the wrong thing because they're so hurt or they're or they're just so hurt they can't engage and they can't they don't want to commit and they're they're insecure and they're untrusting because they've been so hurt so you've got two sides of the same coin here and it, it's a difficult time and they don't want to get and they don't want to get into something serious again because they're scared but um so it's a hard time to find somebody it's really challenging and the other side of it is is why I didn't date and why I'm not with someone why I'm single so I've been single for like 10 years and I didn't date for 10 years and there's a reason um when my kids and I were young when my kids were young I was in a serious relationship and it, it was sweetest guy ever. He was such a great guy. And, um, but life, life happened and things got in the way and it didn't work out and it was really hurtful and it was hurtful for everybody all around for different reasons. So it really, it really hurt a lot of people to break up. So after that, I decided I wasn't going to have kid guys in and out of my kids' lives. And I didn't think it was the best idea to have guys in and out dating, in and out of their lives, some of them working for a while, some of them not, and meeting the kids and not meeting the kids and all this kind of stuff. So I did it. I'm sorry, I've got my water because I'm such a water junkie. Like, I can't go without it. So my answer to that was just to not date for like 10 years till my kids were older. Now my kids are 20 and 23 and I want to date and it's hard to find somebody. It's just a really difficult time to find find a partner to date and to date seriously and look for a long-term committed relationship, which is what I'm looking for. I'm not looking for casual dating and casual fun and this kind of thing because that's easy to find, but I'm looking for something more serious, which is more difficult because most people, again, are either engaged already with somebody like in a relationship or they're so hurt and broken that they are scared to get into another relationship. So it's a hard time. But um, this is this is why I didn't date for 10 years. And these are one of the things I regret in life. I regret making that decision not to date so much because kids are much more resilient than we think. And I thought the worst of it, the worst of what could happen. I didn't think about the fact that my kids might have benefited from seeing a healthy family figure had I found somebody that it worked out with. And um, my kids would have benefited from seeing me in a healthy, good relationship. And they didn't get that chance. They didn't get the chance to have uh, a mom and a dad together growing up. And um, that's because I didn't give them that chance because I didn't date. And I didn't date for the right for the right reasons. It was all for the, I did everything for the right reasons, and I did it with the best intentions. But um, those are one of the aspects of it that I do regret and I do look back on and wish that I chose differently. Now, I could have gone wrong. It could have ended up with just scumbag after scumbag in and out of my kids' lives. And, I, and I've and i made the exactly right decision. But I could have found someone that was really wonderful, that loved me and that I loved and that was loved my kids and was good and was a good family person. And I missed out on that, right? So um, there, there's two sides of that. And um, that's a difficult one. That's a hard one. The second thing I want to talk to you about is school. So I'm a nurse. I work as a nurse, but I'm also an educated and trained paralegal. And the reason I got this way, and I'm not licensed, so I didn't write my P1 exam. Um, when my mom was dying with cancer, she, I took care of her. I looked after her like full time and instead of her having full time nursing and I took the time off work and I did it for her. That's the least I could do for a mom that was so great to me my whole life. I had the most wonderful parents and I, my dad's still alive and he is amazing. Like I'm so blessed. And my parents were both like, they were, there's a huge family. There's seven girls and two boys and they treated us amazing. They were wonderful to us. But um, the littlest thing I could do would be to take care of my mom and I did. 
but my mom got to a point saying, you know, Deirdre, you can't just take care of me all day and night. You got to do something fun for yourself, something good. So what did I do? What was fun was sign up for school. Why not? I love learning. So I signed up for a full-time night school. And so it was every day of the week and it was like five hours a night. And I signed up for the paralegal program and I took it because I love the law. And I did really great. I did, I did, worked really, really hard on it, but I, I did really great. I got great marks. But in my very last course, I lost my mom. So I finished the course, but I didn't write my P1 exam. I, I didn't feel at that time like I was in the mindset to write my P1 exam. So it's something I never did. And <coughs> I regret that, but that is something I can go back and do. Um, that is something I can go back and I can write, but, um, I don't really, I'm not interested in it because I never wanted to be a paralegal. I wanted the legal education and knowledge and experience so I could use it to um, complement my nursing and where I wanted my nursing career path to go. Like I wanted it to go in a political education management area and I and understanding the law is very much a part of that. If you want to help advance nursing and advance the nursing practice in advanced nursing best practice which is what i want to do and um there's a lot of legal framework around that and also being able to read and decipher legal documents and to be able to put them into perspective and understand how they apply to everyday nursing care and um, nursing policy is very important and i'm able to do that and it's only because of this legal education that i've been able to do so so I'm grateful and I'm grateful that was one of the best choices I made and another great gift my mom gave me by telling me to go do something fun at night for a couple hours a night every night so I got a break from just caring and I did something that I loved and it really has benefited me in the long run and, and it will continue to do so so that's the other thing and the third thing is is why I don't go without hair in public so I have as a result of doing it on YouTube, had the guts to do it in public. And I I like how I look bald. I, I think I look I look cute. I think I look I like it. Like I don't think I don't hate myself at all. I think I look beautiful bald. It's a different look. It's very it's a natural look, but it's me and I feel comfortable in my own skin. Like I like it. But there's a thing to this. And please comment if you think I'm wrong. Because this is a sensitive topic and I hope I don't offend anybody or hurt anyone's feelings here. But when I'm bald and I go out, people associate baldness with cancer. It is a social, it's like a social marker of having cancer. And what I get is a lot of people that come up and say, I'm so sorry, or you're so strong, you can get through this. You are beautiful, you look beautiful like this and you're going to get through this. You're a strong girl and, um, and make comments like this. And I have to tell them. I, like, I don't have cancer, I have alopecia, and that's why I've lost my hair. And out of out of respect for people that have lost their hair with cancer, I, I owe them this to tell, to be honest, and tell people this. And, and the problem is, is that they're apologetic, and I know they feel embarrassed, and they feel badly for saying that to me. And I don't want them to go home and feel embarrassed and feel uncomfortable because I'm grateful for the sweet things people say. Even though I don't have cancer, it's nice that they took the time to stop and say something because if I did, maybe that's the one thing I needed to hear, right? And my concern is, is that they go home and they feel uncomfortable and they feel, they feel guilty or they feel embarrassed that they said that when really I only have alopecia and I'm not suffering from a terrible disease. And they don't, next time they see someone bald, they don't say that. And maybe that's the person that really needs to hear it. That's the person that really, really needs to hear a beautiful compliment like that, or some, some really encouraging words like that. And this person will no longer say something like that because of the fear that the person could just be someone with alopecia like myself that's just lost their hair for other reasons. <laughs> So that's why I feel uncomfortable wearing my hair bald because I feel like it's disrespectful to people that have lost their hair due to cancer. I feel like it's a disrespect and um, this is a touchy subject so I'm sure I'm going to get a lot of hate for it and I hope I don't. I hope I get a lot of criticism if, if I'm wrong. Crit criticism is different than hate. 
I really don't appreciate hate, but I do welcome criticism. I do welcome it and I grow from it and I learn from it and I value it. Like I really value it. It, it makes me a better person hearing other pe other perspectives because I'm only learning, thinking from my own, right? So I love to hear from others. So tell me what you guys think about this. Tell me what you think because I wouldn't mind going out without hair and I, I like it. Like there's some days where I just don't want to put, want to put it on. I feel ugly and I'm like, oh, like it's fake. I feel fake. I just don't want it on. I just want to be me, but I don't do it out of respect for those because I don't want someone to feel like the next time afraid to speak up and, and, and give those words of encouragement to someone who could be suffering from cancer and could be suffering and hurting and that's why they lost their hair when really I'm not. I've lost my hair and I, and for me, it's just another beautiful side of myself, but for some people, it's an illness and it's a sign of their sickness and their pain and their hurt and their tragedy. And it's not fair to misrepresent. And that's, I feel like that's what it is. It's a misrepresentation of, of what, of myself, because that's what people think. And, um, and that's that. So those are the th three things I wanted to talk to you guys about and tell you about, because I know I've alluded to them in different times and over different videos, little parts of them, but I've never really explained. So I wanted to explain those things and um, get them off my chest a little and just tell you guys a little bit about myself. So I hope um, I hope it's been beneficial. And don't forget guys, if you like my channel, to give me a thumbs up and comment all you want and criticize all you want. And please give me a subscription. I'm grateful for every single one. I'm really trying hard to grow my channel. I've put a lot of videos out there. And in comparison, when you look at how many videos you should have per subscribers, mine are way under. And I don't know why, because I, I put, really put my all into it. I really, I do my best. I work hard at this and I try really hard, but I just don't get the subscribers. So um, maybe you can tell me what I'm doing wrong. Maybe you could um, give me some tips and, and tell me like I'm, I really do work hard at this and I do my best and I'm, I'm working hard to grow this account so please um if you feel inclined please give me a subscribe I'd be I'd be grateful and I will see you guys again soon thank you for listening to me talk to you guys soon